Hello and welcome back to another We Ourselves video. And today I wanna to do a review of a limited series on Netflix entitled Supercell. In South London, a group of normal people suddenly develop powers and the only apparent connection between them is that they are all black. As they deal with the impact of their powers under their daily lives, one man must bring them together. Beyond them being all black, they are all sons or daughters of parents who suffered from sickle cell anemia. That's the other unifying point, which is why it's called Super Cell. The show features the main character named Michael, played by Tyson Cole, and his relationship with his fiance, Sabrina. They are the central couple in this story. There are six episodes. Each one of them highlights one of the different characters. And when it comes to the main character, Michael, he's a delivery driver in London, and he's the one who tries to bring together all of these people into a group so that they can evade this evil corporation who's doing experiments on black people who suffer from sickle cell, and more importantly, their offspring who have developed these different powers. And that's the general background of what's happening. I loved the show. I mean, it was really good, it was riveting. I had a hard time keeping myself from not binging all six episodes. That's how good I felt the show was. And it was also refreshing to see black superheroes. The show itself has a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes and a seven out of 10 on IMDB. It was really nice to see a group of young black superheroes because we don't see that in the United States. And don't mention Marvel Studios and don't mention DC. In fact, Marvel Studio needs to take note from what Netflix was able to do with this show. As I watched it, I was reminded of the CW era of superhero shows, but then one reviewer mentioned the show Heroes. And as soon as they said that, it's like, yeah, that's what this show reminds me of. It reminds me of a British version of the American TV show, Heroes, only where all the heroes are black. But the other thing that kept going through my mind as I watched the show was that this is what MCU fans like me have been asking for. This is why I've done my other videos criticizing Marvel for the subpar representation of their black characters. Each episode is titled after one of the characters in the show and it goes into their lives and we get to see who they are and how they think and operate before they discover their powers. And then it's fun to watch them not only discover their powers, but grow to learn their powers as well as how they all come into contact with each other. By doing that, the show takes its time to invest in their lives. And as a result, we are invested in the outcome of what's happening to them. The other thing that I really liked about the show is how they set up the world in which they existed. Basically, you have the evil corporation who's doing the experiments on the, the black people in London who suffer from sickle cell, but more importantly, their offspring who manifest powers. But there are two groups that you see. You have the main group, the heroes, who develop their powers independently, but as Michael finds out, he needs to bring them all together to oppose the evil corporation. Then you have the other group who actually have been captured already by the evil corporation, and some of them are used as hunters and they are sent out to gather any new people who develop powers and the evil corporation become aware of them. And I like how they set that up because that's really easy to understand. It doesn't take away from getting to know the characters and it really sets up the world in which they exist. You have the very real world of blacks from various backgrounds in London and now you're injecting this supernatural superhero element into their midst this world building that someone like the Star Wars Acolyte show failed to do. But that's a topic for another video. But that also brings me to my list of nitpicks. I love the show. I think people should go and watch it. It is definitely worth it. But I also think that there are some pitfalls or there's some nitpicks that I have with the show. The first thing that I want to say is that there's really only one character involved in gang life. But by the end of the show, all of the characters end up having to deal with the main members of the gangs. Like I said, it's a nitpick because I was hoping that they didn't have to go there. So I thought this was refreshing when you had most of these people, they weren't even anywhere near the gangs. But by the end, and I'm not gonna spoil anything, but by the end, they end up having to deal with the gang in their individual ways. The second little nitpick that I have is random people suddenly demonstrating that they have powers. 
They aren't just discovering that they have powers and how to use them. They are actually using them as if they experienced. But they're not on the run from the evil corporation, nor are they working for the evil corporation in any obvious way. There was a very clear cut division of people who had powers, those who had just discovered them and who were on the run. And then there was the group of people who were sent out to gather up any new individuals that were identified by the evil corporation. But all of that is upset when you have random people suddenly show up and demonstrate they have powers, but they clearly don't fall into either of these two groups. It took away from the specialness of the main characters as they go about trying to learn how to use their powers, find each other, and come together as a group to defend themselves. I heard somewhere, and I don't know if it was in a news report or if it was in some kind of show or movie, but I heard that London has the highest number of CCTVs of any major city in the world. But whether it's true or not, the show acts like it is because they go out of their way to constantly show the cameras around the city. And because they do that, I started to question why the characters within the show seem like they are totally oblivious to all the cameras that are around them. You have some of the gang activity in front of cameras. They could clearly be seen going in and out of the activity where they're going to leave a body. Then you have the other characters who discover or realize that the evil corporation are tracking them through the cameras, but yet they're still riding around and going to people's houses. They're doing all kinds of things. And there's really no open acknowledgement that you're doing all this stuff in front of the cameras. The main character, Michael, his power is he can teleport himself. He can do it instantly. He can go a place and he can come back. And it's interesting to see how he develop it and how his significant other, they find out and they figure out what's going on with him. There comes a moment at the end where the person that he cares about is in trouble. You find it odd that he doesn't simply teleport that person, clear out of danger, and then instantly come back to whatever the situation is. Instead, he teleports the person to just the edge of what's going on, but they're still well within the danger range. But then I kind of understand because they established early on that something is going to happen. And it seems like even though you establish this guy has powers that could keep that thing from happening, because you've already said it would happen and it motivates him, then it feels like your hands are tied. So now the character has to act out of character in order for that event to happen. And the last thing that I want to mention goes back to the um, people appearing to have powers out of the blue. There is one of the gang members who demonstrates they have powers at the end. And then when you find out that the evil corporation knows about this person and put the person back on the street, you start to think, well, nothing that he did within the entire show actually hinted at he was working for the evil corporation. When you look at something like they clone Tyrone, the clones have a purpose when they are put back into the community. Tyrone's clone has a purpose. He serves a purpose. And when the human face of the corporation, played by Kiefer Sutherland, when he shows up at the mint point, he's great and he's there and it all makes sense. And so for me, an American written show actually had better plot line and structure than a British written show when it comes to that. The show is good, and I can't say that enough. The character treatment of these black superheroes is far superior to anything Marvel Studio has done with this black heroes. Supercell provides us what we're missing from Marvel with all of that Disney money. In the one episode, the first episode in which we are introduced to Michael, we know more about that character than we learn about Anthony Mackie's Falcon in all nine episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+. Hopefully you'll get a season two a Supercell because it's set up for a season two. So watch it on Netflix. And in the comments, tell me, did you see it? Do you plan to see it? Did you like it? And as always, you can like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next video.